Folks, uh, we have a great guest with us. You may be familiar with ABC Family, The Fosters. It's a great show. They're now in season two. We have an actress with us now going to talk about the show. Caitlin Carver, how are you? I'm doing great. How are you? Oh, we're still blasting. Thanks for fitting us in your schedule. We'll catch everybody up a little bit on what is the premise of The Fosters. Yeah, The Fosters is um, it's a one-hour drama on ABC Family. It's about um, a multi-ethnic family, and they... It's a mix of foster kids and, and biological kids um, who are being raised by two moms. So the two moms actually have um, – a kid, one of the moms has a kid, a kid of their own, and then they adopt foster kids. And, um, you know, it's – my character comes in on season two. She's a student at Anchor Beach, which is the high school that all the kids go to. And – She is the star of the school's dance team, and so you'll be able to see, my character's name is Haley, you'll be able to see Haley um, dance throughout season two, which is really exciting because I I started as a dancer when I was three years old, so I'll be able to dance, and um, you'll get to see a cool storyline with Haley and some of the characters, um, some new relationships and new friendships and a lot of drama. It's, It's pretty cool, but yeah, The Fosters is you know, it's a, it's a show that I feel like a lot of people can relate to on a personal level. And um, for me, I think that's so important in a TV show. So it's an incredible show, and I'm I'm so lucky to be a part of season two. We're getting ready to come up on the premiere of season two. Season two actually premieres, I think, June 16th. You'll be able to check that out, folks, and you can see uh, Caitlin. And you mentioned briefly, because you started out kind of with the growing up and dancing, and really now you get to bring that to life on, on TV in this role. That's kind of a, a really cool thing. Oh yeah, it's it's amazing. Um, I my mom put me in in dance classes. She put me in ballet at first when I was, I think I was about to turn three years old. So as soon as I could walk, pretty much she she put me into dancing. I think I was kind of dancing everywhere instead of walking. So I've been doing it since I was I was really young, and I haven't stopped dancing since. Um, and you know when I when I first moved out to California because I'm originally from Alabama, I was still dancing and I was doing dance jobs, but acting was always a passion of mine and I knew I I would really like to get into that and make that my career. And so now that I've sort of transformed my career into an actor, it's it's really cool to be able to, you know, book a role that allows me to do both of my passions because that, that's not mixed very often. No, I mean, you got a chance to be on Glee and you got a chance, you know, you started out on, you know, so random and some things that were able to, to get you going in that direction. But obviously you were still doing work with uh, some, some record artists like Beyonce and uh, Pitbull and that kind of thing. But now you get to, you know, to, to act as a dancer, kind of, you know, a character that likes to dance. That's just that's just a great amalgam of, of both your passions. Right. Yeah. I mean, when I when I originally got the audition for the Fosters, I, I was just going in to read for it, and I found out that the character was going to be the star of the school's dance team, and I, I I instantly got so happy and I felt so connected to this character because, you know, I was on my school's dance team in high school. I know exactly what it's like to be a member of the team, and and I was a captain of of the team, and you know, it's it's. It's so so relatable for me, and I feel like I can connect to that character so much more. What is it like coming in on season two? I mean, the cast is uh, we we you know we don't really ever hear negative things about the cast of the Fosters or anything like that. But how is it that they sort of kind of embrace you and uh, kind of bring you into the fold? Um. Well, I when you say you haven't heard anything negative about the cast, I. It's because there's absolutely nothing negative about them. I have never worked with a more positive and more welcoming cast and crew in my entire life. That's fantastic. I, I literally, yeah, I I actually leave whenever I have like a full day of work. Like I, there'll be some days where I'm there for almost 12 hours. We have really long hours. But at the end of the day, it's one of those things where I just don't want to leave because I'm just so happy and I'm around positive people and people who love what they're doing, which makes the environment so much more exciting and, and warm. Um, but when I first came on uh, the first episode of season two, uh, when my character is introduced, I it was my first day to a new job, and I was a little bit nervous, um, as anyone probably is on their first day of a new job. And 
and it, it was a, it was the most comfortable environment ever. I mean, the crew, the producers, the director, Norman Buckley was directing the first episode, and he's just a genius in general. And all of the cast, they're literally the most lovely people I have ever met and worked with. And I'm actually really good friends with a lot of them outside of the show now. Like, we hang out on the weekends, and it's just, you know, they want everyone to be comfortable. And... Because when, whenever somebody's comfortable, they can explore more, you know. And so they and they and they all know that the cast and the the writers and the producers and directors, that's kind of their mindset. That when if as long as somebody's comfortable, they're going to be able to explore. And so that kind of helps you open up as an actor, is just making making the environment comfortable. And that's exactly what they do. How is it um, compared to the set? And I'm not trying to get you to badmouth anybody, so don't get me wrong here. Uh, you know, compared to something like Glee, you were on Southland, Nashville, some shows like that. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, I think this is my first really recurring character. I did a couple episodes of Nashville where I played Hayden Panettiere's character, but um, the Fosters is my character on the Fosters is is a lot um, bigger and has more of a storyline and more of a developed character than anything I've ever done. And, you know, you get, you get so comfortable on the sets and you, you're around these people all the time that they instantly become friends. Whereas like on Southland, I came on for one episode and I was only there for like five or six hours. I had one, one little scene and um, I played this like bloody girl, but you know, I found that no matter where I'm working, I'm, I've always been surrounded by nice people. And I don't know if that's just me because I'm kind of like, I'm kind of known to, to bring a really like fun, exciting attitude. I kind of have a lot of energy all the time. And so sometimes it can be a little obnoxious, I will say, but um, I I feel like if I bring fun, then everyone else is going to have fun too. So I've honestly had so much fun on all the sets that I've been on. And, you know, there are some where, where the series has been on longer and maybe some bigger names are attached to it. And you don't, you don't personally speak to those actors as much as, I have on the Fosters with actors on the Fosters, but it doesn't make it any less fun. And, you know, it's, it's still a wonder, like all of those jobs have been wonderful to be a part of. So now you've landed the reoccurring role and that's pretty exciting times and that kind of thing. And I know you've got a lot of other things in the hopper that are, that are in development as well. So when you look back, um, especially, um, coming from the dance background, the acting background, so much stuff. Is there some one in particular, some things of of wisdom that you still sort of kind of cling to that kind of still motivate you? Oh yeah, actually, um, my ballet teacher. I was I was I grew up at a studio in Alabama, and I had a ballet teacher there who she. I mean, still to this day, whenever I'm doing a job, if I'm ever not not insecure, but if I'm ever like nervous or or just don't feel 100% comfortable. I, I'll text her or call her because she just has this way of, of like explaining to you that you're enough, you know, you know, and that you're there because they want you there and, and whatnot. Um, but I always, I always go back to her because she, she was just such a powerful teacher and she really trained me. And I, I truly think she taught me the person I am today because What's her I, name? I don't feel like, her name's Tatum Krieger. Um, she's very strict. She's one of those strict ballet teachers. Um, she studied in England like all of her life, and I, I just feel like she's shaped me into a, a good person and someone who is professional. And I, I think being professional, especially in this industry, is so important. Um, but I, I definitely think that. And then, honestly, all the jobs I've been a part of, like Glee and, and Nashville, I get to. Just, I mean, of course, working on the show is, is really incredible, but being able to watch some of those actors, like Connie Britton has always been one of my favorite actors, and getting to just sit there and, and watch her in her scenes and see how she is, you know, on a, like on a day where she's filming, it's, it, you just learn so much when you just step back and watch anyone. That's awesome. Awesome. Great advice as well, by the way. It's helping with mm-hmm. advice. you got to take a pause and not force things and just kind of observe and take it all in. Yeah, absolutely. You mentioned your high energy attitude, your uh, go, go, go mentality. What do you do to uh, kind of kick back and relax? 
Um, well, I, I love watching TV and movies, obviously. I, I have so much energy throughout the day, and especially if I'm working. I, well, I also drink a lot of coffee, so that could be part of the reason why. Well, we're, now we're feeding, um, we're feeding the beast, Caitlin. That's what's happening, so. <laughs> yes, I, I actually drink like three cups in the morning. It's really terrible. Actually, it's great because I love my coffee, but everyone who knows me knows that I'm 100% a, a coffee addict. Totally it's, jacked It's up. really funny. Totally um, jacked but whenever I'm not working, I, I like, I love hiking. I love yoga. Um, I love cooking. Cooking is one of my favorite things to do if I ever have any downtime. Well, you're in, um, you're from Alabama. What what's what's like the the favorite recipe? Because I know I'm going to get excited because that's you know <laughs> you're about to get hungry. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, um, I I love cooking southern foods uh, like casseroles. My mom makes this. My mom's an incredible cook, so I've I've learned everything from her. I love baking, but. Um, especially on holidays and stuff, I'll do like a chicken poppy seed casserole or, uh, there's this Velveeta, it's a Velveeta chicken casserole. It's a lot of casseroles, basically a lot of cheese and butter because that's what we do in the South. Yeah. If it's got um, butter, if it's got butter involved, you can sign me up. I mean, butter it exactly. needs to be a prerequisite. You have your coffee. I'll have the butter. <laughs> yes. Um, I love cooking that kind of stuff, but obviously, I can't eat that every day or else I would probably weigh about 500 pounds and that wouldn't really work for, for me. Well, so you, you, I, you probably, you probably, you probably hover around 200 and I'll, I'll just testify to that. That's all I'm going to say. I'm not going to you know <laughs> say that that's because of the butter I eat, but I'm just saying that's about where you kind of land, you know? <laughs> so, so let's, <laughs> oh, we're just having a good time with this. All right. So let's talk about are. movies, movies for a second. Cause you mentioned that and that's, okay. no, that's right up my alley. So, What's like the summer movie that you can't wait to see? Or maybe you already mm-hmm. saw it. Well, I have uh oh, I read um The Fault in Our Stars mm-hmm. and I can't wait to see the movie. Yeah. <laughs> because I love the book. Yeah, yeah. And I plan on bringing an entire box of tissues to the movie because reading the book, I literally was sobbing in my bed the entire time I read it. Um it's so great. It's such an incredible story. Um, I wonder. I wonder I if also, I, I wonder if I'd get through another theater if I showed up to sell Kleenex. Like I could just sell boxes of Kleenex. Just, tell him. just walk up in the. I'm uh, no. I'm not here to watch the movie this time. I'm just going to here to sell boxes of Kleenex because everyone here needs like them. Like the like a Girl Scout. Yeah, kind of, kind of. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I yeah, think different color, different, would different. Make so much money. Yeah, I could just retire. That'd be it. I'd be done. Like one movie. You could retire. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Made my fortune on Kleenex. <laughs> All right, so besides that, that's a great choice, by the way. Yeah, I also can't wait to see um, Melissa Scent. Yeah. I keep seeing the trailers, and I love Angelina Jolie. I think she's so beautiful and a powerful human being. And so I'm I'm actually just really curious about that movie. Um, yeah. Can't wait to see that one. Yeah, she just did it's an interview. She just, she, she just did an interview with Movie Phone. We posted yesterday about the interview with Movie Phone. She's talking about a movie and her her kid, her daughter being in the film and all sorts of cool stuff. So yeah, that's another. That's a good choice. Yeah, I'll have to check that out. I've not seen that interview. Awesome, awesome. Well, folks, we've been talking with Caitlin Carver, uh, talking about ABC Family, The Foster. Season two arrives June sixteenth. They're in the middle of production. She does get a nice summer break here in a minute. She has lots of coffee to drink and lots of cast to bake. <laughs> Uh, Caitlin, we wish you so well. Please keep in touch. I know you got other stuff that's going on, and when some of that breaks, we can uh, definitely talk again. Yeah, that would be great. It was great talking to you. Awesome. Thank you again so much. All right. Bye. Bye-bye.